I'm Kim Edelston with FamilyBusiness.org, and today we're going to be talking about an incredibly important topic, succession planning, and specifically when and how you know it's time. Succession planning is something that so many family businesses struggle with, and we have the perfect person to offer some insider advice, Tony Wood. Tony is a principal and national leader for the Global Family Office Practice at RSM. He's been recognized as one of the top 50 professionals to know in the accounting industry by Accounting Today. He's also very well known for his work helping business families, including family-owned businesses, family offices, and their investment structures. Tony is a devotee of service leadership who carefully considers how to service his clients best while creating an atmosphere where others can thrive. This is such a pleasure. So let's jump right in. How do you know when it's time to start planning for succession? If someone says I'm ready, it means they've come to grips with the fact that they're ready to turn the reins over and what that succession looks like. What we spend a lot of time on is, is it truly time and are they ready? Because as you can imagine, the individual patriarch, matriarch has spent their life building something that's extremely successful. And when you start to look at that, that handoff or that succession, is it right for the family? Is it right for the family members who may take over? If it's not a family member and it's strategic, what's it going to look like once I, I make that handoff? And so we spend a lot of time with the Q&A as when you say you're ready, are you truly ready? And are you ready with the emotional aspects that are brought into play when you talk about succession planning? So I've heard you talk about emotional triggers and their importance to succession planning. What emotional triggers signal to a family that it's time to start planning? For the uh, patriarch and matriarch, it's the fact that they are at a point where they would like to have the business work for them. And they're going to step out. And stepping out is a big decision because it means that the day-to-day -day operations, all of the decisions that have been made prior are going to be handed off to someone else. That's that first emotion of fear, which is, can I really do this? Am I going to be able to stay out of the boardroom or out of the, the, uh, the idea of, of the individuals running the business? And so fear is usually the first thing. The second thing is trust. You have to trust the process. What have you put in play? And then the last is confidence. You have to feel very confident that what you're doing is going to continue to allow the business to grow, that it's allowing um, a new generation or maybe a new set of leaders to step in. And then when you put it all together, the fear, the trust, the confidence, take a step back and say, have I met each of those three emotional barriers and how do I get across them? I always hear how difficult it is, even if a parent thinks their child will someday be prepared and confident to actually think, now is the time for my baby to take over my other baby, the family business. So how can a family tell when the next generation is really ready to take over the business? The patriarch and matriarch built something that was very special and it grew and became very, very profitable for the family. And there needs to be really an interviewing process to that next, the next owner, that succession of where do you see the business going? What are you going to do different? How are you going to ensure the fact that the business thrives like it is today? Have they sat in a role or position in the business to date that really would indicate they're ready to take the reins as the CEO and president? And when you get through all of those type of questions, you have to sit back and say, do I really have the right person? You know, I love my son or I love my daughter, but are they really ready to step into probably what's going to be one of the most difficult transitions? And that is the scrutiny of being able to step into that role and, and saying, I don't want to replace my mother or father. I want to enhance what the business can actually be for our family. Oh, I love how you said that because it is hard stepping in particularly when that founder is larger than life. And then exactly. you also, you know, not only stakeholders will compare, you know, the adult child, the successor to that larger than life leader. But then sometimes you even hear the older generation, they'll actually say, well, he or she's, they're not like me. They, they expect a clone 
Is there any little advice you have when you hear that? Because that's kind of a, a danger signal. You know, what I've asked a couple of the patriarchs and matriarchs are, what are the three toughest decisions you had to make in the business? And what I normally ask them, have you asked the heir or whoever the successor is going to be those questions? How would they have handled it? What would they have done? There's always these seminal points in the growth of a business that either make or break the business and the patriarch matriarch made those decisions. If they would have made the same decisions, that's a good start. But in succession planning, it's it's check and verify, check and verify until you get to that point where I know that my son or daughter are going to do great things here. And then the, the hardest part is realizing what if they're not ready? Can I bring in a strategic? Can I bring someone in who has basically proven that they have done this before? Oh, that's so excellent. And you kind of hinted the fact that, you know, succession, it, it's not all unicorns and butterflies <laughs> and poses. Exactly. So what for a, what you would call, let's say, a successful succession, what would a pre and post succession look like in reality? There's a beginning, there's a middle and there's an end. So the beginning is the realization that we want to do a succession plan. And that really is that emotional uh, barrier that we talked about earlier. I think most successful successions have the patriarch and matriarch involved during the transition. And that could be one, two, or three years where they're still sitting in the room. They're still helping with decisions. They're getting the next gen or whoever is going to take over comfortable with the roles, the relationships the individual may have in the business and then there's the back end where you're completely out of the business. You're always there as, as a confidant. You're always there as someone they can lean on. But that back end is critical to you've done the transition, you need to step away. And I think that's the hard part of the back end is that you're finally out of the business. So the succession really is that pre, which can be two to three years. I like the two years in the middle where you're still actively involved and then you're out. And I've had people say, wait a minute, it's going to take five years to do this. And his point is, yes, if you want to do the right succession, plan it, execute on it, and then honor whatever the, the back end needs to be. I love that because you really focus it on it being a process. Correct. And you even Correct. suggest that's one of the things that can make family businesses so successful is that there's that transition, right, where the older generation is able to mentor, but then finally hand over the torch, you know, in name and in authority and power. Exactly. Excellent advice. So many family businesses try to do succession planning on their own. And of course, some are successful. But what are maybe some signs that external help might be needed? I always feel that when we get called, it's that they've reached a point where they can't quite articulate or get what that succession looks like. They've met with different advisors and advisors have said, you know, you need a document that does this, a document that does that. The problem with succession planning is, yes, you need a document, but there needs to be an emotional buy-in. There needs to be, who could I sit down with and air all my concerns um, and then be able to know what are other families like me doing? So there needs to be a best practice approach to that discussion. And then last, the process needs to be something that the patriarch and matriarch feel they're driving, not being told, but they're driving the process around their comfort areas, around their, their wants and needs. And sometimes a third party brings that to the table where you're able to sit down and say, what is it you're looking to do? Do you have a plan today? And then what are you comfortable when you start looking at the process? And, and then the last piece is timeline. What's the timeline of that? And a third party really can bring that to the table to where they're helping coach, guide, and, and put that together for you so that the document is nothing more than a roadmap. It's the emotion, it's that trust, it's the confidence that has to be walked through. The, the external advisor should be someone that is a coach that really is sitting down to say, look, we've been here before and we know how difficult this is. Let's walk through where are your fears and how do we help accomplish that step one where is the trust need to be in here? And then how do we build confidence around your decision? It really is this ability to sit down and help someone ask questions they wouldn't normally ask. 
understand where others have made it or and maybe failed. And then how do you build that, that process that feels like, hey, I'm still in control of this and it's following the process that I want. That's really what a third party should do. Oh, that's excellent. And so succession, it, it can be the demise of family businesses, unfortunately. What final pieces of advice do you have for our audience? Take a step back when you're ready to start this dialogue and say, what is the perfect outcome that I could have for my business? And then work backwards to get that outcome. Do I have the right people? Do I have the right strategy? Do I have the right plan? I always think if you start at the end and work backwards in succession planning, it goes a lot easier because you know what success should be. It's never, never going to be easy, but done right, it does accomplish the goals that you have for probably the biggest asset you've ever built, which was your business. Oh, this is such good advice. I'm sure we're going to help lots of families. Uh, thank you so much for being with me today, Tony Wood, again, who's principal and national leader for the Global Family Office Practice at RSM. Thank you. Kim, you're wonderful. And thank you for uh, inviting me on.